Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Walsbacher of Beers OK, and you're watching Elemental Craft. Uh, here with me is my co-host, Ian Sproul. We're in lovely beer garden in beautiful Jinx, Oklahoma, America. Thank you for joining us today. Our goal here is to educate you guys on the elemental craft that you should be drinking. See how we did that? So, uh, <laughs> we uh, come right out of the gate this week with uh, Attacking Mac. That's right, we're going to attack the macro craft, craft beers that are out there, uh, as well as the macro beers, uh, with their own six-pack of the week. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it off to Ian, and he's going to go off with the first beer. So this is a, a drink this, not that. We've picked out uh, six different beers that we think go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the big macro brands. And to start it off, uh, we've got Marshall's Old Pavilion Pilsner, which is a <clears throat> delicious German-style pills uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Budweiser. A lot of people, especially, well, I think only in Oklahoma, yeah. have this uh, misconception that the Budweiser is uh, stronger in Texas. So they always talk about six point bud right. and you know making the road trip to pick up you know. Yeah. I don't I don't <laughs> understand it because uh, Well they, they, they think it's gonna be stronger. Hey it's a stronger beer. We all we can get a year's low point, blah blah blah. It's just those misnomer terms that just got filtered in throughout the years and, and nobody told them different. Yeah. The uh, Budweiser in Texas is actually about four point two percent uh, alcohol by volume. Because they measure it differently there. They right? do measure it differently. In Oklahoma, we measure 3.2% alcohol by weight, which in reality is about 4% uh, alcohol by volume. So there's really not a huge difference in the strength between you know Budweiser that mm -hmm. they're buying in Texas. And if you really want to, you know, bust your uncle's balls about drinking <laughs> <clears throat> drinking Budweiser, this Marshall Old Pavilion Pilsner is even stronger and it comes in at 5.1% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Carry most Marshall products. Uh, they've been a staple in Tulsa and the Oklahoma area since 2008. Uh, seek them out, man. Uh, great price points as always here. Yeah. Uh, and in with that, we're attacking, uh, I believe, Natty Light uh, with uh, 401k's Cream Ale. Uh, these guys are killing it, uh, quite frankly. 401k comes in a four pack, really competitively priced. Um, you know, drinking it o over a uh, 30 pack of net, <laughs> whew, I can't even, can't even fathom. Uh. <laughs> so, Natty Light, uh, Budweiser, all of those kind of light, fizzy brands. Yellow water. <laughs> Yellow water. They're uh, adjunct lagers. Yeah. So, they use corn, rice to. Uh, Build up the body, sweetness a little bit, right? right? Uh, one of the uh, characteristics of a cream ale, such as the, the 401k, is it has a, a little bit of that corn sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it really uh, is a, a much better uh, alternative than uh, drinking that fizzy yellow <sighs> yeah. Natty Light. And there's something to be said mm -hmm. about Macro. They do a consistent product well. Con consistently all over the U.S. with different breweries. It's pretty amazing. However, uh, if you want to support some local guys and get a little bit better of a flavor out of your beer, uh, we always stress uh, quality over quantity sometimes. Uh, yeah, you have your lake beers and whatever and all that jazz, but you know, we'll get to that in another episode. <laughs> but uh, right now, these guys are killing it with these uh, introductory beers, as we like to call them, uh, if you're not familiar with a lot of the craft in this market. Right. So, moving on, we're going to up the scale a little bit. We're going with Rough Tales Pale Ale. Uh, these guys are crushing it with their IPAs, crushing in another fun term out there. Right. Uh, they're aggressive IPAs that they've had, but this one's, uh, this one's going to help you uh, branch out a little bit into the, you know, past the ambers and things like that. Uh, right. Well, you so, guys move these pretty well here. Yeah, we sell a lot of Rough Tail, and they're really probably the best top game in Oklahoma right now. And we've put this one uh, up to uh, Green Line Pale Ale from Goose Island, which is, uh, they were purchased by Anheuser-Busch. InBev. InBev. The whole thing. A few years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh... You know, you're familiar <clears throat> with that nowadays, people. <laughs> this, uh, 
It's a, a Northwestern style pale ale, so you get some of that, some of that citrusy, uh, piney notes. Uh, it's not super over the top bitter like right. some of the, the other like IPAs and double IPAs. Definitely more subtle. It's a it's a nice introductory into uh, some of the hoppier beers out there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, moving down the spectrum, we're going to uh, attack these guys here. This is a pretty big seller everywhere you go. Ballparks, yeah. you know, it's on draft at pretty much every bar or restaurant that has. Draft beer. It's pretty much made out Boulevard wheat, which is still kind of considered a craft. You know, yeah. um, I, I used to see Boulevard everywhere, but this guy's still standing strong. Uh, you know, in you know the whole myth of adding a fruit to it right. never really was a thing, but <laughs> they did it. Uh, but we're attacking that with a local guy, uh, Glenn Hall's Renaissance wheat. Uh, get these in a four pack. Uh, the Renaissance wheat, uh, Indian wheat. Sorry, he uh, pretty much brewed this for his wife. Which good on them. Keep your keep your wife happy. Right, happy uh, wife, happy life. There you go. Uh, it's a German style Hefeweizen, but with a few flavors. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about adjuncts here. You know, adjuncts not necessarily something that is meant to make the beer, but it enhances the beer. Uh, Glenn does that well with his Indian wheat, uh, using uh, some Indian flavors like cardamom. And uh, it's just a really nice, refreshing drink. I'm not a big Hefeweizen fan myself. It's a little too full-bodied, but it's a big step up from these guys, to be honest with you. And uh, the 16-ounce cans and the price point, it's money. Right. You're still down to try it. So uh, moving down from that, we're attacking some of uh, the fruited styles a little bit here. Uh, we're going to kind of go after the big guy, the Bud Light Lime, with Uinta Lime Pilsner. I am crushing this beer right now. It's so good. They uh, they actually use pulverized lime in the brewing process, so it's none of that chemically cloying artificial flavor. It's just like straight up lime. And the the pilsner, it's really crisp. It's I like to compare it to uh, Corona with the lime, mm -hmm. without any of that skunkiness. Mm -hmm. It's uh, glass bottles. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but Lime does that too, the clear bottles that they're used to. Like, right, I think they're still doing. Now they're doing kind of cans and aluminum stuff, so they're, yeah. they're kind of hitting these guys hard. But you'd be silly not to give this a, a you know, side by side. It's miles better. <laughs> You're just going to have a fuller body, crisp, refreshing. Right. Um, you can knock off a laundry list lake beer, boat beer, uh, lawnmower beer. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's gonna, it, it'll never end. Uh, so pick these up, six packs. It's easy. It's, uh, Ian's got an amazing pick six to my left, so uh, you could be silly now too. And then we're going to uh, attack the last uh, uh, guys here. Uh, Lion Kugel, you know, kind of a soft spot. Still kind of considered craft, but now it's really macro craft, right? Right. It's uh, owned by Miller uh, Coors, which is now owned by ABM. Same guys who do the do Blue Moon, so, so. curse. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Lion Google's made some great shanties. And they keep coming out with a lot more of them. But uh, Great Divide over in Colorado has been making some amazing beers themselves for years now. Uh, one of the, I think, uh, one of the original kind of craft up and comers in the right. 80s and 90s. So uh, they're canning almost everything. So, again, you can take this anywhere you go. And a Rattler, uh, uh, give us a little bit of your knowledge on that, because I know you love those. So uh, Rattlers and Shandies are the same thing. It's beer uh, with fruit juice. And, you know, Wine and Kugel does lemon, ginger, watermelon, like, watermelon pumpkin. Like pumpkin, all kinds of flavors of, uh, of Shandies. So yeah. uh, Great Divides, uh, Rody Rattler, it's a grapefruit Rattler. So it's got a uh, nice, bright, uh, citrus notes. Mm -hmm. It's super refreshing. Like you could easily finish that in about <laughs> three gulps. Perfect for a ride. <clears throat> Bicycle fits uh, in the bottle cage. Just right, real nice. There you go. This guy's thinking. Yeah. And uh, the main point: four point two percent. Yeah. Holy crap! So you could drink this all day and yeah. not. And I don't think. Well, <laughs> and I know Lion Kugel's can and some of their stuff too, of course. Uh, and you'll always have those offerings here, but sure. But for something a little bit different and a little bit more uh, true to craft, these guys, money. Right. So, again, uh, that was our six pack of the week. Uh, our word of this week was adjunct. 
So look, go look it up if you don't remember. Uh, <laughs> adjuncts a uh, something that you add to the beer to uh, enhance it. Not necessarily something you have to have to make the beer. Thank you for joining us this week on Elemental Craft. I've been Brian with Beers OK. And Ian, uh, Beer Garden, where can they find you guys here in Jinx? We're 807 East A Street, uh, just across the river, right across the street from the bank, uh, First Oklahoma Bank Tower. You can see it from pretty much anywhere off of Riverside. <laughs> uh, BeergardenJinx.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also see our full selection of beers on Untapped. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that lately. I get all those updates on Untapped from you guys, so it's pretty yeah. awesome. And I've been Brian of Beers OK. Shop us 24-7 at BeersOK.com. Go to the podcast, the blogs, and then now our new Elemental Craft video series on uh, OklahomaCraftBeer.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that, at Beers OK. Until next week, cheers. Cheers.